people in JKD love to talk about the stories that um, that they have, but are they using these stories and the knowledge that may be contained therein in the best manner and to their best advantage? We will take a look at the ways JKD people can transform their experiences from over the years into stories which can inspire, inform, educate, and entertain for generations to come, thereby ensuring the continued existence of Jeet Kune Do. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 101. This is the one about you and your Jeet Kune Do stories. So as you're logging in, if you would be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, uh, hit the like button and continue to do so uh, during the broadcast. It is a long-standing uh, tradition, let's call it, in, in Jeet Kune Do, this uh, telling of stories. Um, we're told that Bruce Lee did it in the company of you know the, the, all three um, eras, Seattle, Chinatown, Los Angeles. Um, Sifu Dan, in turn, did it, com probably continues to do it, but he did it with us out in when I would be out in LA or when we are out on the seminar circuit. And um, many of us uh, to this day do it with our own students after class, um, sometimes for hours on end. So I hear people all the time predicting the ultimate demise of Jeet Kune Do. And very often it's actually people who are highly invested in Jeet Kune Do and who would benefit greatly from its perpetuation. So to me, that is um, a little bit uh, confusing. Um, when it comes to JKD stories, many people seem to think that the value of these stories lies primarily or predominantly in the dirt that they might have on another JKD colleague or on a, J, a JKD counterpart. And while there might be, there might be a time in the interest of um, truth, justice, and the American way, there might be a time that it's necessary for a JKD uh, sh a charlatan to be exposed, but that's not what I'm talking about right now. I, I, I am, I'm referring to this, this somewhat of a feel-good desire that some people have to cut other people down. Um, I guess it's what's known out there in the so-called real world as cancel culture. You know, the thing where if you can find something disparaging about somebody else, then you're obligated to put it out there and get that person's TV show, get that person's um, Oscar hosting gig, or even their means of livelihood canceled. Um, I say get that crap out of Jeet Kune Do. When no less a personality than former President Barack Obama or comedian uh, extraordinaire Dave Chappelle, when you get those people calling other people on their nonsense, then I simply ask why can't we do something similar with Bruce Lee's art and philosophy? Um, the fact is, the human beings have had a love affair with stories since day one, right? Um, the brain enjoys nothing more than a good story. That's why stories have dominated our culture throughout the existence of our species and why we've used whatever medium um, we had at, at our disposal to tell these stories. So if it's cave drawings in prehistoric times or if it's a YouTube video in the 21st century, um, that's because we don't, we don't just like stories, like we love them, all right? So, and research has shown that the right kind of stories activate, I think they call it the oxytocin hormone in, in our brains. And it's something that the scientific community refers to as the love hormone, right? Yeah, baby, check that out, right? <laughs> so stop for a moment and think about this, right? Think about how, how many Bruce Lee stories are there out there and Aren't we, in spite of having so many Bruce Lee stories, aren't we always hungry for more, right? So we have, we have a, a, a biography like, like Matthew Polly's Bruce Lee, A Life. We have, and these are recent uh, publications, Bay Logan's uh, Bruce Lee and I. And then we have picture books by Steve Kerridge. I was, when I was researching earlier today, I almost called him Ketteridge. I'm sorry about that, right? So, so and, and Steve's got um, some stuff coming up very recent, very, very um, soon it should be uh, published, right? 
we have all these stories, but we're always hungry for more on, on Bruce Lee and, and Jeet Kune Do. And that's because, so as far as I know, those things sold very well, right? And it's because of the stories that are contained therein. Um, I've been told that there are four key factors that make stories effective. And those um, key factors are one, simplicity, two, authenticity, three, visibility, and four, relevancy, right? So good gosh, don't all four of those factors apply to Bruce Lee and Jeet Kune Do. Simplicity, authenticity, visibility, and relevancy, right? His it, 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 he was all about simple. I mean, there, there's so much talk about Bruce Lee being, um, you know, the art of simply simplifying, right? Um, direct and effective, that's all Bruce Lee. His authenticity as a martial artist is not questioned. Um, visibility, again, even today, I, uh, just, I, I, I saw a post from Burton Richardson and he was saying that there were pictures of Bruce Lee boxing in Hong Kong that he had never seen before. So with all this passage of time, when it comes to Bruce Lee's visibility and the amount of photographs that are out there, there are still many that many, many people have not yet seen. And as for relevancy, well, like I just showed you, in 2018, 2019, 2020, I'm sure, they're still writing books. They're still making small screen and big screen shows around Bruce Lee, about Bruce Lee, or what have you, aren't they? All right? Um, but I wasn't even necessarily talking about Bruce Lee. I was talking about you and your Jeet Kune Do stories. So simplicity, let's go back to the four factors. Um, when you tell your Jeet Kune Do stories, do you focus on making them simple stories with simple messages? Um, authenticity, when you tell them, do they have the ring of truth or do they sound like you're trying to um, build your own self up, like you're trying to sell yourself? Um, visibility, when you tell your stories, even if you are trying to build yourself up, there's nothing wrong with that if it's in the right context. Have you already visibly shown that you possess an impressive expertise when it comes to Jeet Kune Do? And then relevancy, when you tell these stories, are there things that, that your people actually want to hear um, because they are relevant to them in some way, because they are important to them in, in some way, right? So if any of this sounds interesting to you, oh, let me, let me do my own visibility and put a plug in for the stuff available over at jkdrebel.com forward slash store. <laughs> okay, so if this sounds interesting to you, here's my suggestion for you. First thing first, assess, do an assessment. Check and see what JKD stories you are always telling or what JKD stories do people always ask, like about your JKD journey or something, right? Um, is it about how you got started or who in JKD is your biggest influence or whatever, right? If you're asked the same questions over and over, then chances are people are curious about how you did something and this is a good indication for you. Um, number two is to ask yourself, ask yourself questions and dig deep. Um, oftentimes it's, you have a, a great story, but you don't even know it because it's your life and so to you it might seem boring or, or irrelevant but to others it might just be the thing that um that kind of ties them to you my, my um business uh mentor dan kennedy um it, it, through him through the coaching that i got from him i realized that i was actually a, a pioneer i was the first carabiner to um to travel out to la in pursuit of, of Jeet Kune Do. So that's actually somewhat of an inspirational story for other people from the third world. Um, so, and then the other thing that you have, so if you talk about, for example, your Jeet Kune Do origin story, right? Now, now, what is the story behind your story? Does that make sense? All right, number three is, what is a big problem that being involved in JKD may have solved for you? You know, was it a practical and functional thing like it helped you to get in the best shape of your life or it, it, it helped you to become unbeatable, right? <laughs> or, or was it more esoteric? Was it like it helped you in some way to make sense of the world at large, right? For example, 
Um, number four is, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever sat down and made a list of the things about Jeet Kune Do that you enjoy the most? The things about Jeet Kune Do that might make you feel, this is gonna sound silly to some people, but the things about Jeet Kune Do that might make you feel happy, that might make you feel strong, that might make you feel energized, right? I guarantee you, there's two of my JKD seniors in particular, right? Cass Magda and Burton Richardson. I guarantee you that they are very happy that G. Kondo brought them the wives, um, the, the women who became their wives, right? And if you doubt me, go ahead and ask them yourself uh, directly. Um, the, the next one is, have you ever, have you ever sat, well not sat back, but have you ever taken the time to ask like your closest friends or family members and or your most trusted associates what they think is your best Jeet Kune Do asset, right? Because if you can't figure out what Jeet Kune Do has done for you, perhaps you can ask them for feedback, right? If you ask them their opinion of what it is that you have to offer, what do they find unique about what it is that you bring to the table as a Jeet Kune Do person? Um, and maybe even what it is that they think that you do best when it comes to, um, to Jeet Kune Do, right? Ask them for stories or for examples of where they witnessed you at your best, okay? Um, so, what is your Jeet Kune Do story? When you find that, you will most likely discover a source of power um, that will energize, re-energize, or continue to energize you along your Jeet Kune Do path. And in that way, you will be doing your part to perpetuate the art, okay? Can you dig it? All right, that's it. Um, feel free, share, like, comment, ask questions. I'll review everything after posting. Sign up for notifications for when we go live here on Facebook. And over on the YouTube, subscribe to the three channels for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, the um, FMA files, and the Jeet Kune Do dialogues. And when you do subscribe over on the YouTube, make sure to hit the uh, notification bell. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Um, at ilovejeetkundo.com, the Quick Skill Series Volume 1 is available. Coming up on Friday, November 8th, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues uh, episode with uh, Matt Thornton of the Straight Blast Gym. And that should be at the regular 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Today is a red day. There you go. Uh, and I'll see you back here next time. Oh, be sure, support the show over at jkdrebel.com forward slash store. Uh, it's a work in progress, but uh, as, as we develop that and offer more stuff, uh, I, I really hope that you'll show your support over there. And uh, I'll see you, uh, some of you on Friday, some of you back here next week for another issue of the, G, uh, the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care now. People in JKD love to talk about the stories that they have, but do they use these stories and the knowledge that may be contained therein in the best manner and to their best advantage? We'll take a look at the ways JKD people can transform their experiences from over the years into stories which can inspire, inform, educate, and entertain for generations to come, thereby ensuring the continued existence of Jeet Kune Do. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast number 101. This is the one about you and your Jeet Kune Do stories. So as you're logging in, if you guys would be kind enough to say where you're logging in from, and um, hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so throughout the broadcast. Okay, it's pretty good. Um, I hear people ought, ought, no. Do this first. 
it's a long standing tradition in Jeet Kune Do. The telling of stories. Bruce Lee did it in the company of Dan Inosanto, for example. Sifu Dan, in turn, did it with us. and many of us to this day do it with our own students after class sometimes for hours on Sometimes four hours on end. So, ta okay. I hear people all the time predicting the ultimate demise of Jeet Kune Do, and very often it's people who are highly invested in JKD and who would benefit greatly from its perpetuation. So I find that uh, confusing. When it comes to JKD stories, many people seem to think that the value of them lies primarily or predominantly in the dirt that they might have on another JKD colleague or counterpart. And while there might be a time in the interest of truth, justice, and the American way that a charlatan, that a JKD charlatan, that a JKD charlatan be exposed, that's not at all what I'm talking about right right now. What I'm what I that's not a that's not what I'm talking about. That that's not that's not what I'm talking about right now. In other in other words, in in other um, no. I'm not referring to yeah, that's not what I'm talking about right uh, okay wait. and while there might be a time in the interest of truth justice and the American way that a JKD char char charlatan be exposed that's not what I'm talking about right now I'm not referring to this feel-good desire to I'm not re I'm not referring to this feel-good desire that some have to cut others down um, I guess it's what's known in the world out there as cancel culture. You know, the thing where if we can find something disparaging about someone else, then we're obligated to put it out there and get that. We're obligated to put it out there and get that person's TV show, get that person's um, Oscar hosting gig, or even their means of livelihood canceled. then we can retire to our basement bedroom knowing that as social justice warriors, no, no, no. You know, the thing where if you can find, yeah, if you can find something disparaging about someone else, then you're obligated to put it out there and get that person's TV show or Oscar and it means a livelihood cancel, okay. Then you can retire to to your basement bedroom, knowing that as social justice warriors, you fought another day of worthy battles.